what's funny, that, that was in a newspaper, and apparently, when it, right when it came out in the newspaper, um, this reservoir was pretty new, and there was no boats, no swimming, no nothing on the reservoir. People were forbidden on the reservoir because it was brand new. And uh, somebody heard two cops who, they had a whole bunch of new cops because Gamlin came in. And the two cops were looking at the paper and they were debating whether or not to come find me and arrest me since I would obviously broken the law by, they guessed I was standing on a rock or something. In, out in the, and they were debating, is standing on a rock in the reservoir a uh, crime? And somebody convinced them to leave me alone because they never came and found me. And I, my part of that picture was taken right in front of this house with a big old snowbank behind me. And then they took a picture of the reservoir and then put me in the reservoir. But I thought it was hilarious that the cops couldn't decide whether to arrest me or just let it go. to buy my trike, I'm, I'm interested in selling it. And I said immediately, yeah, I'll buy it. Yeah, it won't fall over. <laughs> it seemed like I was getting a sign that I needed to go back to three wheels. <laughs> convincing people to front him money for uh, for gold. When gold boomed the last time, maybe 25, 30 years ago, um, somebody back in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where my old lady was from, uh, sent her a newspaper clipping, big long newspaper clipping in a local paper from <coughs> about this family that back in the 30s, had bought a bunch of stock in a mining company, and since gold had become so much more valuable, all of a sudden, they were expecting to get rich. And the newspaper, you know, was congratulating them, and the guy had bought the stock from Dr. Macau. Oh. <laughs> Stephanie called up her friends and told them not to believe the newspaper. Yeah, he's been, he been dead for how many years? Right Nothing now? there but a hole in the ground. I mean, people will kill somebody for a little bar of gold. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> ain't worth that here, dude. You can have <laughs> He would hire us all 
around Christmas and we'd set, set up the place and then he'd bring investors in and then he, and they'd, he'd bullshit them. But he, then he'd give us a paycheck two weeks before Christmas. So the Perfect. local guys loved it. <laughs> Eldrin Cole had horses up here running loose. El Eldrin Eddie had between 20 and 40 at most any given time. Yeah, I got a lot of my shoeing work from their horses in the summer when they'd, somebody would want to rent their horses and go somewhere. And, and I'd have to shoe like hell for a couple, three days. But I uh, got paid in bar tab. At the uh, gold coin? No, at the uh, red bandana bar. So it works out great. No money had to change hands. illegal to rob a train and uh, it didn't work out like we expected. The train people <laughs> came to us and said that they wanted us to rob the train every time it went down the track and they didn't want us to take money because some people complained and we said fuck that you know we're not doing this for them. Uh, we were doing it because it seemed good you meet a girl in the bar, you ain't got no money, you want to buy her a drink, you say, excuse me, you go out, you get on your horse, you ride down to Blackhawk or to the city line, the train comes every 20 minutes or so, you rob it, you get a couple of bucks, you come back up, you buy the girl some drinks. <laughs> That's good. That's good. But, but we weren't prepared for the tourist people who had been to Disneyland, you know. I remember when they, we talked to the railroad people and told them, fuck it, you know, we're not going to work for you and we're not going to rob the train every time it comes down the track. And so I got on my horse and I was coming home and the stagecoach was coming down, just going out of Central City. So I pulled my gun and stopped the stagecoach because I was pissed and stuck my gun in the stagecoach and there was a little, like a seven-year-old kid in there, was all, nobody else. And I kind of had to go along, you know, because I'd already started. So I snarled at him and said, you better give me some money, kid. And he gave me a quarter. And so I let him go on down to town. And that was the last time I robbed anybody on the road. It's so noisy at the fair, but all your friends are there. And the candy floss you had, and your mother and your dad. Oh, to live on Sugar Mountain. Some of them cops in that arrest you. One of them told me I wasn't a local. He wanted to put me in a police car with a guy I'd been fighting. And I said, I'll walk up to the jail. And he said, uh, I'm, I said I'm a local. And he said, you're not a local. And I said, yeah, and your mother sucks donkey dick. <laughs> <laughs> Without even thinking. <laughs> and it's a good thing I was drunk, because he wailed on me with his nightstick <laughs> for a while, right in front of the gilded garter bar. <laughs> My mouth responds to things 
when my, when my brain hasn't got into gear. So How long have you lived up here, Sandy? 342 years. How much gold did you get out of the ground? Oh, back when it was cheap, we got a few tons. <laughs> Is that your pile of uh, coal? No, that's just black painted gold nuggets. Oh. Keeps people from stealing them. Right. Throw the gold ball just as he got in the car, and then he'd run down the aisle yelling, my gold, my gold, where's my gold? <laughs> and he would sell a bunch of stock by the time he got to Chicago. <laughs> There's a girl just down the aisle Oh, to turn and see her smile You can hear the words she wrote As you read a hidden note Oh, to live on Sugar Mountain With the barkers and the colored balloons You can't be twenty on Sugar Underneath the stairs And you're giving back some glares To the people who you met And it's your first cigarette Oh, to live on Sugar Mountain With the barkers and the colors On Sugar Mountain Though you're thinking that you're leaving there too soon Barkers 